Hi everybody, it's uh, this is Joan Taffeter here, and today I was gonna I'm making a video about making more milk when you're breastfeeding, and so I wanted to just tell you about a little bit about what's been going on with breastfeeding for me. I did uh, make another video about painful breastfeeding, and I talked about what I was doing to address that problem. But one of the reasons that I'm making more milk while I'm I'm still breastfeeding and I'm pumping milk. Uh, while I'm still breastfeeding and the reason I'm doing that is because of the pain because the pain was so great at first it started off with um, on the left side just um, it was engorged a bit and <clears throat> and I went to the emergency room and they said that it was a blocked duct, duct. and um, essentially they said that I would have to just push through the pain to be able to continue breastfeeding and like once she learned how to latch on I guess maybe the pain was supposed to go away but she did learn how to latch on and I'm talking a little quietly because she's taking a nap right now so I don't and she's kind of on the verge of waking up so I don't want to wake her up but um but so um I was so they told me that I would have to push through the pain so I basically did. I found out that it was yeast in the breast and I was able to eradicate that. Then I ate some foods that were not good for that and it kind of flared back up again. So I'm going to share with you two things today about what I'm doing to make more milk and um, while I'm breastfeeding. So I'm hoping what I can end up doing is that I will be able to stop breastfeeding around between six and eight months when she's six and eight months old. Um, six months yeah, six months would be perfect um, because that will be, I think it's five months till then, or July, August, September, October, November. November should be seven months. So if I do through November, that's five months of milk and I'm able to pump 20 ounces a day extra. So um, so that's, that's a good amount. We've actually bought a freezer to put all the milk in because there wasn't enough room in the freezer in the house anymore. So um, so, and, the, and another reason that I am doing this and I'm so committed to this is because when I had my son 24 years ago, I was only able to breastfeed him for four and a half months and which was fine. I think I, I continued to breastfeed him off and on while feeding formula till he was six months. But, um, I really just want to make sure that she has a full year, God willing, as long as, you know, everything continues as it, as it is now, that she'll be able to get milk through then. Um, and it's important just because I don't know what's going to happen when we start feeding her food. I have a lot of food allergies and um, and she's shown that she may have like an already a uh, little sensitivity to dairy because when I ate some kefir a couple days in a row, she has got a little congested. So I don't know what to expect, but I just want, you know, as, as long as it's possible for me to do this, I want to do it. I am still in pain pretty much. Um, every day almost it's very rare when I don't have pain I am using the I talked about before the lanolin um, <clears throat> lansino brand and um, that's helpful to put on the breast before I breastfeed or pump I'm also using um, Lotrimin which is uh, for yeast so I put that on the breast too different a separate time from the ointment because um, it if you have the ointment on it like basically doesn't let anything in there so you want to and then I go without um, a bra as often as I can just to let things air out and so there's not yeast growing so um, I'm just gonna share a few things that I do when my husband's home he brings me water this helps me to make more milk um, and I'm also craving and this is before I even knew that oat, oatmeal actually helps you to make more milk I am craving um, Oat bran. So I was eating like two, sometimes up to three servings a day of oat bran with some kind of fruit. So I put frozen fruit in it. Um, the fruits, mostly berries, because berries are low in uh, sugar, so they don't help grow the yeast. Um, so, um, so I am pushing through the pain still, and I'm just, I'm just, I made some myself some notes because I want to make sure I included everything I can here. So. Um, so, okay, so I made a, a little list. So to make lots of extra milk, this is what I did. I eat oat bran one, now I don't usually do three times, now it's one to two times a day. I drink eight to 16, sometimes a little more than that, of coconut water. 
um, and or regular water. Sometimes it's uh, way more than that actually of regular water. Um, I eat coconut yogurt. Um, I eat and drink till I am full. So I'm not really fully focusing on trying to lose weight, although the last few days my stomach muscles feel really weak and so I'm feeling like I want to um, lose some of that weight so that I can start strengthening the stomach, but I think I'm going to do that anyway. Um, I drink water every time I nurse. Um, I'm not starting any intense exercise right now because I have read that that can actually lower your ability to make milk. So I'm just walking. Um, and we were kind of going up and down right after the C-section. I walked a lot more, like we were walking every day because it was the best way to get healing. Um, and I was losing the weight a lot faster. So just with the walking, I was still eating everything. So now I've been walking less and, and I've not only stopped losing the weight, the, the skin is getting a lot, uh, just more looking more um, gross in my opinion. Um, the other thing I'm doing is I'm trying to be patient with the letdown when I pump. Um, I'm using the Pump in Style Advanced Medela machine and um, what I end up having to do, I pump for about 20 minutes, uh, sometimes it's a little less, but um, initially usually the, they're really full so the milk starts coming out right away and then I, there's one or two more times where there's a letdown. So a bunch of milk comes out and then it, it's just pumping and then nothing's coming out and then I'm usually about ready to stop and then it starts um, milk starts flowing out again maybe one to one and a half ounces and then it'll do it again sometimes if I sit there long enough usually it doesn't do it more than three times so um, but and I try to wait the 20 minutes and I'm also gauging how many ounces it is so it's usually about um, could really depend if she ate on that side then there's usually only either half an ounce, maybe up to an ounce and a half um, left over. And then on the other side, there's usually about, depending on what time of day and how many hours have gone by since I last pumped, if it's only three hours that went by, usually it's only about, um, oh gosh, I wanna say like uh, three ounces, maybe 2.75 to three. And then if, and if more than that, maybe five, six hours, by the time six hours has gone by, I'm pretty engorged and it's actually leaking out. So, um, and I usually can get mm, six and a half. I have gotten up to eight ounces all at once. That's usually been overnight um, from one breast and it's usually the, the right. So anyway, that's just a little bit of detailed information on that. And then I did start taking fenugreek herb, which I did hear helps um, to make more milk. And then, um, one of the biggest things that I noticed was if I don't drink enough water. Um, and I don't know that it matters if it's coconut water or regular water, but I did notice a difference. There was a couple of days where I just got busy and I didn't think about it or something happened and I wasn't drinking enough water. So I did notice that uh, immediately. So that's a huge thing. Usually I crave the water. I'm very, very thirsty. So I don't generally have to force myself to drink too much, but um, that's just something to think about. Um, so I think those are the main things that I did. Um, so um, I'm also um, I'm getting and one of the things that I do is I I am giving Jessica a bottle some once a day. Usually, at least I try to once a day. Yesterday we didn't do it but other times I do it twice. Sometimes it could happen twice in a day. And essentially I'm doing that because I wanna give her a little bit of probiotic in her milk, uh, mostly to help repopulate the gut, the, the flora in her gut because of the C-section. And then because right three weeks after, I think it was three, maybe four weeks after she was born, I had um, a uh, bladder infection and I had to be on an antibiotic. And I noticed that's actually when the yeast started really bad um, in my breast. And so, um, so what I did to take care of the yeast and what I'm still doing and kind of working with this um, is that I stopped foods um, that flared it up. Essentially, and this is something that I had maybe a week ago and it flared it up, it was honey. I made actually supposed to be healthy almond cookies, like lactation almond cookies and and I, cause I put nutritional yeast in it and I know brewer's yeast is actually the one that is usually in lactation cookie, 
but I put nutritional yeast in it with honey of all things usually like I've made them in the past with maple syrup which is probably still bad for the yeast so honey maple syrup out um, protein bars that have a little bit more sugar than I can handle right now because of this um, I can usually handle a little bit and I, when I say sugar I'm talking about like some natural sugars um, but so I'm doing no none of those right now um, more than seven grams usually that's what it is um, kombucha but it doesn't matter the grams it matters your body so um, kombucha I love kombucha but I can't drink it right now no bread uh, dairy I don't usually eat a lot of dairy anyway but just those couple times I had the kefir um, and then I'm putting Lotrimin on the nipples after feeding or um, monostat and um, I'm also using gentian violet solution for when my the nipples feel like they're really really burning really bad um, and itching the whole breast actually itches but the nipples can just feel super raw and when I use that it actually seems to help it um, it will stain your clothes or your tile or your tub or whatever so and I use Dr. Bronner's um, cast style soap to clean it off and it just kind of melts it right off um, pretty quickly if you clean it right away um, some things can get stained pretty permanently, but and even her mouth, like it'll be all over her mouth, and I'll actually show uh, a picture of that on Facebook, but because um, I think it's just so funny. But I also don't like it. I get worried. Oh my gosh, what if this doesn't come off? But it always does. Um, and I would bathe in six tablespoons of baking soda almost every night. Um, I washed our clothes now in baking soda. Uh, also with the detergent. I threw away some shirts initially that I was wearing when I didn't know what was going on. I threw those away. Those had a lot of holes in them. I was just sort of wearing them because they were hanger on shirts for while I was breastfeeding um, before I knew that it was the yeast. I, I boiled the bottles to kill the yeast. Um, I ran our washing machine through once with bleach. I'm going to do it again because I started to smell like the washer started to smell like a little bit mildew. Um, and I was wondering where it was coming from. I was like, what the heck? And so, um, and then I also washed a whole load of laundry in bleach too, but it really, the bleach, I probably may have used a little too much because the towels are now ripping. They're it practically destroyed everything. I didn't completely destroy it, but it, I think I used too much, but right after that though, it was eradicated. I also did a, a, a round of Diflucan. So I did all of that and I was pretty feeling pretty good and then I ate those lactation cookies so I've been having I've been struggling ever since so um, but I'm gonna do all of this again really soon uh, I've already started a few things I did buy a couple of new bras um, and anyway so that's what I'm doing with making more milk and addressing the yeast infection in the breast and um, I'm gonna make another video, uh, other videos about some other topics that are going on right now with with our with us and our health and, and Jessica's growth and development. So I'll talk to you soon.